Hi, boys and girls. My name is Miss Darlene, and I'm going to read to you out of a wonderful little book called How Great Is Our God? 100 Indescribable Stories About God and Science. We can learn so much about God. The first story I'm going to read about is based on Hebrews 13, 5. Be content with what you have, because God has said, never will I leave you, and never will I forsake you. God wants us to be happy where we are, kind of like a kitty who likes to purr. Now, a cat's purr is one of the most soothing sounds around. Did you know that? But it's also a little mysterious because we don't completely understand how or why they purr. We usually think cats purr because they're happy and content. Mm, I think that's true. But cats also purr for other reasons, too. A mother cat will purr right after her kittens are born. I didn't know that. And the vibrations help the kittens, whose eyes are still closed, to find the warmth and the milk of their mom. But cats also purr when they're nervous or when they're hurting. Scientists think that the purrs soothe them and may even help them recover from injuries quicker. And every cat has its own personality. Some are soft and rumbling, just like us while other personalities sound like an engine starting up from across the room. Whatever the reason behind it, purring has become a symbol of feeling happy and content. Now, the Apostle Paul said that he had learned that secret of being happy and content no matter what. How? How did he do that? By counting on Jesus. Listen to what he said in Philippians 4.12. I know how to get along with very few things, and I also know how to live with a lot of things. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of having abundance or even suffering need. And then he said the famous promise so many of us know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now that doesn't mean you'll feel like turning cartwheels all the time especially in hard times like this coronavirus thing that's going around and we have to stay inside so much of the time. But it does mean you will have a blessing each day. You just might have to look up to remember it and remember that God is with you all of the time. Even on the worst days, you have a God who will never leave you. He won't, boys and girls, and promises to meet all your needs. And those are some pretty good reasons to purr. Could you pray this little prayer with me that they've written in this book? Would you pray with me? Lord, open my eyes to see all the reasons I have to be happy and content. And let me purr out my praises to you and my thanks to you. I hope you'll learn to do that, boys and girls. That's the end of the first story in our little book. Now I'm going to go to another story. If you have time to hear another one all about our whole universe, all the stars in the sky and the whole universe, and it's called, This One is Just Right. Who knows, it says in the book of Esther, you may have chosen to be just such a time as this. Do you remember the story about Goldilocks and the three bears, right? While Mama, Papa, and Baby Bear are out for a walk, Goldilocks helps herself to their porridge and their chairs and their beds, testing out each one until she finds out the one that's just right for her. Now, while Goldilocks could learn a thing or two about manners, there is something to be said about things being just right. Like our Earth, did you know it is just in the right spot so that we can all live here? a place that scientists actually call the Goldilocks zone, or for you more scientific types, habitable, habitable zone. Earth isn't too close to the sun, which would burn us up to a crisp if it was, or it's not too far away, which would turn our planet into a big round popsicle. In all the vastness of space, God placed Earth in just the right spot so we could all live here. Wow, and guess what else? God places each of his people in just the right spot, just as carefully, like long ago when he placed Queen Esther there in the land to save her people. You can read about that great story in the book of Esther. Now you might look up to the stars sometime, or even at 7.6 billion people in all the world. But remember, the God of this creation doesn't think that you're unimportant at all. 
He chose you to be his very own, and he put you in just the right spot to play an important part in his kingdom. Even now, yes, you may be small, but you are prized by Jesus, and you have been chosen by the God of all creation for such a time as this. Even in the midst of coronaviruses, you can do something special. Do you want to pray with me this prayer that's in the book? I hope you will. It says, Dear God, when I start to feel very small or unimportant, help me remember that you made me just right. You chose me to be yours, and you put me here for just such a time as this, even with coronaviruses sweeping around your world. Thank you that you're here with us. In Jesus' name, can you say amen? Amen. And that's the end of our second story.